Maybe it's the lure of the sea. One sentence summary. Basically, a shit remake of Deep Blue Sea. Could you beat the villain? The sharks in this, although there are big sharks, the main threat comes from little baby sharks. So, could I beat them? Yes. Yes, I could. I would lure them into an area where I'm not in the water, as we see characters do, and then I would just smash them with a solid object, which the characters could have done in this film, but don't for some reason, mostly because they're all idiots. How would you improve this film? This film should never have been made. As I said, it's basically a remake of Deep Blue Sea, but on a much smaller budget, and it has a worse premise. So in the last one, AKA the good Deep Blue Sea, they were trying to use the super sharks to create a cure for Alzheimer's because the sharks don't age the way that we do. Fair enough. They should have used turtles in my opinion because turtles live for a long time as well and you know, aren't murder machines. Um, not that sharks are murder machines, but they can murder you if they so choose. And a turtle would find it much harder, or a tortoise. Anyway, in this one, uh, I think the guy's name is Carl Durant. He's a rich, genius, scientist man, something like that. And he's afraid that AI is going to uh, take over the world, so Terminator. So his plan is to use the sharks to create like a smart drug that they can then use on people. How is someone who is using a smart drug not thinking, shit, these sharks are a bit bit bitey, aren't they? Let's not use those, or let's not be in the sea whilst we're using them. The CGI in this film is worse than the one in the good Deep Blue Sea, even though it's about 20 years newer. And honestly, in that one, the CGI wasn't that brilliant anyway, because it was like, well old. The characters in this film don't reference the original, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, but the film references it. So there's someone with a key on a necklace and someone says Deep Blue Sea. But the characters never say like, oh well, however long ago, there was a company called Chimera who were doing this research on sharks and we've resurrected that project or we've piggybacked on it, something along those lines. So in the world of this film, independently, two groups of people have thought, you know what we need to do, make super sharks. Where are we going to do that? In the sea. It doesn't make any sense. I hate it. The theme song or the opening song in the uh, credits at the beginning is pretty jaunty, pretty, pretty nice. That's not how you open like a horror scary film, honestly. Misty Calhoun is the closest you get to a main character in this film. And she's a conservationist or a researcher or some such nonsense. And her intro is her swimming around in a bikini. And you think, okay, maybe she's just using it, using this footage, you know, because there were sharks in it and stuff, to lure in potential investors, you think, perhaps. Uh, and then later in the film, she's not even changing out of her clothes. She's just hanging around in this room in her pants, like with wet hair or something. You're like, oh yeah, that, that wasn't like a marketing ploy. That was the film just trying to lure you in. Shame on the film. <laughs> And it's very clear that they're using the same corridor in this film over and over again, pretending it's a different location. And they're just using different coloured lights and different signs. And speaking of the signs, at one point there's a sign that just says the word alarm. What's that for? And then there was a picture of a security camera. Again, what's that for? What information are these signs portraying? I don't understand. Anyway, a lawyer. Let's say he's a lawyer. I don't know who he was. And he says to Misty Calhoun, aren't you even a little curious as to what we're doing? She has asked several times before, what are you doing? Why have you, why have you lured me to this location? Stupid. And there's a pair of newlyweds in this film who are super in love. And you can tell right from the beginning that they are both definitely going to live right towards the end of the film. Speaking of that bit there where, the, you know, Misty Calhoun has met these newlyweds and the lawyer man has like lured them to this place. They get on a speedboat so they can go to this facility in the sea. And there's so much footage of that speedboat. You think maybe they spent a lot of money on it so they were going to get as many shots of it as they could. So Thomas Jane's character in the first film, the good one, uh, there's an equivalent guy here. He's like a tough guy who swims with sharks and I think he was in the army, this one. And his name is Trent Slater. 
and that just seems like a fake name, even compared to Misty Calhoun. Anyway, he says to Misty Calhoun, don't stop telling the truth, we need more of that around here. Because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't like his boss's shady dealings. Having said that, uh, Trent Slater has covered up or kind of at least hidden the fact that he thinks some one of the super sharks or some of the super sharks murdered a couple of fishermen. Now, those fishermen, they seem to be dodgy guys, but he's still like, hey, tell the truth. What, what happened when you went to get that runaway shark? Nothing. <laughs> Carl Durant, that's the, uh, the rich scientist man, he uh, takes this smart drug that they've used shark brains to make somehow, and we see like random images pop up on the screen, like do 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 do. Uh, I think they were like uh, chemical symbols or something like that. And it was, I think, supposed to be a bit like uh, the BBC Sherlock, where he does thinking and then words appear on the screen and that sort of thing. But usually in that situation, the words appearing on the screen mean something. They're not just random like, ooh, hydrogen, oxygen, all that sort of bollocks. <laughs> I think the lawyer guy is supposed to be like a dead CGI head, but the dead CGI head was so rubbish, I wasn't sure whose face it was supposed to be. I know it was a bit chewed up by sharks, but <laughs> uh, Speaking of that dead CGI head, Misty says, I've never seen shark bite patterns like that before. Really? You can tell that by looking at it for five seconds through a window. You've not even properly examined it, woman. What are you talking about? Misty changes clothes. Uh, this is oddly not enough, not the bit where we see her changing clothes for no reason. She changes clothes off screen and nobody seems to notice her getting into a wetsuit. And then some South African dude, nobody notices him climbing into the wet pool bit to go to the sea. And those things happen within about 30 seconds of each other in the same room that, you know, is not much bigger than this room here. People need to pay attention, is what I'm saying. Things have already started going bad, keep your wits about you. That South African guy as well who jumps into a pool, I don't know what his name was, he probably had one, but they tried to do the same surprise Samuel L. Jackson's got eaten thing with this random dude. You've not earned it film, because A, I don't care who this man is, he's not one of the main characters. B, I don't know who this actor is. It works in Deep Blue Sea because Samuel L. Jackson is Samuel L. Jackson, the most famous person in that movie. Uh, movie and he's given a big inspirational uh, speech and then bang, the shark gets him. Not this South African guy like, oh, bloody hill, that was close. I almost got eaten by a shark. Oh no, my face. Not actual lines from the film. Anywho, I've no idea how the characters got from that wet lab into the corridors, because I swear there was like one door into that room and it was closed. Doesn't make any sense. And I suspect that this film started out as a piranha film. That's why the main threat is the, I was gonna say baby sharks, but basically bubbles under the water representing baby sharks uh, inside the lab instead of one, you know, or a couple of big sharks chomping people outside. Why do the baby sharks make a squeaky noise? I didn't understand that. The uh, characters in this, as you may have already guessed from my ramblings, are not really likeable and don't really have much of a personality. That's fine, I don't really expect them to have that much you know, depth in this sort of film. But the newlywed lady, She's unconscious for like, I don't know, half an hour or something like that. And then she just wakes up. And really, if she didn't wake up at all, the film wouldn't have been any different because she's just there to like wake up, apparently you know, a head trauma, and just go, oh, thank God, look, there's my new husband. Oh, I've been eaten. Ah. And I, I guess he was sad for the, the newlywed man, but he dies a little bit later and he gets eaten up to his waist in a... Well, by sharks in a tube, basically. And then the characters are holding on to him. They're like, pull him up and they're like, oh no, he's been eaten. And they just drop his corpse, or what's left of it. <laughs> Misty Calhoun, she leaves a perfectly good torch in a room. Bring that with you. You never know when the place is going to get dark. And in the good Deep Blue Sea, uh, I mentioned that it was good that the actors did acting. So when someone was like, oh my God, what happened to whoever? The characters just went, and you could tell that that character was dead. In this one, they're like, oh my God, what happened to X, Y, Z? No, no, he's dead, he's dead. He got eaten by a shark or some baby sharks. It's rubbish, all right? Show, not tell. Although I suspect we did see that person getting eaten by sharks, but you get the scene. Uh, why didn't the baby sharks attack Misty Calhoun that time? 
<laughs> she was in the water and I think they go around her. Is it because she had a blowtorch? Or is it because she's the main character? Because it felt like it was because she was the main character. A couple of guys climbing up a big pipe and then for no reason at all the water starts to rise. That was weird, didn't like it. And Misty Calhoun outswims a shark in this film. It happens a lot in these films and I let it slide in Deep Blue Sea, the good one, although I think I mentioned it because, you know, I like that film. It earned it. But this one, no, I hated it. She did not earn out swimming the shark. Having said that, if you are swimming next to someone and you suspect that they have been, you know, mauled by a shark, I wouldn't stop swimming and be like, oh shit, he's been mauled by a shark. I'd carry on swimming, you know? Every person for themselves. Oddly enough, at the conclusion of this film, you see them do a cool action hero shot where they flare gun one shark to death and then they blow up the lab shipping container that's you know the secret entrance to the lab and then i swear there were more than you know there was a couple of sharks basically and i don't think they killed all of the sharks it was stupid and then i watched deep blue c3 spoiler alert and they didn't kill all the sharks so these people are idiots a lifeguard sticks a red flag on a beach which i believe means there's a shark warning um but he doesn't warn the people like the tourist swimmers or walking towards the water as he's sticking that flag in the ground. So, you know, he's paid to stick the flag in the ground no more. Anywho, rating out of five beers. You can't knock a film for having a small budget, but I hated this. Five beers out of five. Who knows the effect that whiskey could have had on